Welcome to Statistics in Excel number 77. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook. Business 210, Chapter 7. Hey, we're talking about sampling distribution of X bar. We just got done uh, 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 proving a few things, and now let's see it in action the central limit theorem in action. Hey, Average gas prices in Washington is reported, this will be the population mean, $2.57.4. We'll assume sigma to be 0.22, so for 22 cents. Sample size will be 50, and the distance on either side of mu, meaning we want to go 3% below and 3% above. Hey, Wait a second, that doesn't make any sense. One standard deviation would be 22% below, 22% above. Yeah, that's for x values. We're talking about x bar here. So we're actually going to have to calculate our standard deviation of the sampling distribution or standard error. So this will uh, be a reasonable interval for that. So our question is, what is the probability that a mean price for a sample of 50 stations is within 3% plus or minus of the population mean. What this means is we can say we'll, we'll create this interval which will give us a probability that we would get any particular mean within this range. Let's go ahead and see how uh, to do this. Let's calculate the standard error or standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. So we'll call this standard deviation of sampling distribution of sample means. That's the big long name for that thing. All right, so our standard error equals, we will take our population standard deviation, we know that in this chapter, and we'll divide it by the square root of our n. Close parentheses. So our standard deviation for this distribution will be 3.1 cents. Now we want to calculate our lower and upper x bar and we're given, this is called the margin of error on either side of our population mean. So we want to get something below this and something below it, below it above it and then say a probability statement like uh, the probability of getting a sample mean above and below this population mean will be so we need our lower and upper. I'm going to type equals, we'll get our average uh, gas price, subtract this three pennies, and then enter, and we'll do that again, but add. So there are our lower and upper. We have, it looks like $2.54.4, and on the upper end, $2.60.4. Now the probability, we're going to use our norm dist. We have our two x's. Remember, you start with the big x, you go to your mean, your standard deviation. Oh yeah, this, oh, ding, ding, ding. No, you got to do the standard error. Now, wait a second. We're mixing up means from the population and standard deviations right there from our sample distribution of the sample mean. Yeah, we can do that, of course, because that population mean is equal to the mean for the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So there's our standard deviation, much smaller than our uh, population standard deviation. Our cumulative, remember, always area probability from the left, one. So it goes all the way up to this one and gives a probability. So from that, we need to subtract, and I'm just going to copy this. Uh, this is dangerous when you click right there. It's always safer up here, and I'm going to paste. And I'm just going to change the x and make it the smaller one. All right, so we get 0 0.6767 cents. Uh, no, that's not it. Guess what? Sometimes formulas, formulas like this, they suck the format from the cell references. So we need to change this. Control 1 is format cells, number, and I'm going to say general. Click OK. All right, so there's our probability. Our conclusion, the probability of selecting a sample of 50 gas stations and finding the sample mean is within 3 cents of 2.57 is 0.6651. Now, some other ways to say this, slightly different ways. 
A simple random sample of 50 gas stations has a probability of that, uh, has a bunk, uh, 0.6651 probability of providing a sample mean that is within 3 cents of the population 257. Now, this tells you the probability of being within that interval. But what if we get outside that interval? So there's a 3349 probability that the sample mean will not be in our interval. Now, here's a picture. Picture says a thousand words. Uh, there's the x bar. There's our uh, x bars, and notice that's probably about three standard deviations, 249. Uh, three standard deviations probably is about th uh, 265 or something like that. So a very small range compared to what we get with population uh, data, right? So those are our x bars, much smaller variation. And here's the area. Area inside, 0.6651. Area outside, 0.333. So this is the probability that we get a mean within 3 cents. Here's the probability of not getting a mean. Now, let's do some change in here. We mentioned earlier the sample size has a, a profound effect on the shape of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So let's change this to 100. Oh, it it not only changes the shape. Look, now it's like from 3 to 250 to 262 uh, or something like that. Uh, not only does it change that, but what did it do to the probability? We can see that down here. I have this linked up here. The probability dramatically increased. And so that's a very important relationship. It's one reason why people like to have large samples, right? When they're testing to see if a sample mean, their sample, is within whatever number of cents from the population mean, the larger the sample size, the greater that probability will be. Now let's go up to 200. Lots of, it just means you would have to go to 200 gas stations and get whatever the price was uh, um, for regular gas or whatever gas we're, we're trying to, to uh, check on. So now we still have our two $2.54, $2.60, but now we have a 94% uh, 94.6% chance. Uh, that the sample mean will fall between these two, these upper and lower intervals. And here's our drawing. Ooh, look at that. Now it's like uh, right all right in there, very small. So, um, oh, and look, the probability in, in chat when we do hypothesis testing, this is what will be interested. There's a, a 5.4% probability that the sample mean will not be in our interval. This is actually the risk you run that uh, your sample mean won't be within your, your interval here. All right, uh, one more. Let's, we're talking x bars and how to use the central limit theorem and all this stuff. Here's an example. History for a food manufacturer shows that weight, the weight for chocolate-covered sugar bombs, a popular breakfast cereal. I don't let my kids eat that because it's like 90% sugar or something. Organic oatmeal. Oh, but this company, chocolate-covered sugar bombs. By the way, I'd let my kids eat it, but I just call it, here's some candy, not cereal. So is, ah, the mu is 14, the uh, sigma population standard deviation is 0.4 ounces. So they, they know that these are the numbers from uh, population data. If the morning shift shows 14.14 ounces and the sample size was 30, the question is, is the sampling error, which is 0.14 because uh, x minus that would be uh, uh, 0.14, the, is that sampling error reasonable, or do we need to shut down the filling operations? Now, I have a little hand-drawn example over here. We uh, list our variables. We calculate our uh, z. We got 1.917. We calculated our standard deviation given a uh, sample of 30, and we got a sample student devi deviation of that. Uh, and we conclude, we make a conclusion. So really, this one's asking, we want to ask a question, um, 
what's the probability above? Because our value is above. What's the probability above? We get uh, 0 0.0276. There's not a real high probability that you could sample and get 14.14 or greater. This probably means the machine is filling too much. Let's go ahead and do this calculation over here. Let me see if I can uh, blow this up just a little bit. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt W G and it makes the screen fit to that uh, size there. Let's try that again. That that should have been a little bit better. Alt W G. I guess that's as much as it's going. Oh yeah, because it's it maxed out that direction. All right, so here's our mu, sigma, x bar, and n. Now we need to calculate standard error or standard deviation for the sampling distribution of the sample mean equals sigma divided by square root of 30 and we hit enter. So we got a sample standard deviation for our uh, sampling distribution of that. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate a z this time and could we did um, norm dis last time we'll do norm s dis this time. So our z is equals whatever our x value is minus whatever our mu is divided by our sigma. That's I'm sorry, um, not sigma, our sample standard deviation, which of course is our standard error. 1.917 is our z, and that's on the upper end. Of course, we expect that because our sample is greater. Now, let's figure out what the probability that it, we could sample and get an x bar greater than or equal to this. Hey, wait a second, let's look at this picture. Oh yeah, the functions always go cumulatively from this side. So if we want the upper side, we just say 1 minus. So 1 equals 1 minus norm s dis. And we just need our 1z this time because we're doing on the upper end. Whoa, that's pretty small. The probability associated with x bar greater than or equal to 14.14 is 0 0.0276. This is pretty low. It seems unlikely that we could have taken a sample of 14.14 14 .14 and had the sampling error by chance. Because it is unlikely that the sampling error is due to chance, the 14.14 probably represents a machine that is filling too much. We should probably shut the machine down and fix the problem. Do you think this kind of thing is done every day in manufacturing companies all over the world? You betcha. Statistics uh, at work everyday kind of example. All right, uh, when we come back, we need to talk about uh, two more topics, including proportions and using uh, the ideas we've been using in this chapter. All right, see you next video.